Good morning, everybody. So, just got into the studio this morning, Monday morning, um, and this is the picture that I'm now working on. Started working on that on Friday, and today I'm gonna finish it, hopefully. Right, so the color palette I'm using today is gonna be titanium white, and these are very typical, um, really, for me, especially doing these landscapes. Titanium white, ivory black, that's Windsor lemon, sap green, dioxine purple, burnt umber, cobalt blue, that's cadmium yellow light, and cerulean blue. Uh, shouldn't need anything else. Probably, maybe I'll need, I'll need something like orange, um, cadmium orange. But that's pretty much, I would say, all I'm going to use today. So now, to, oh, and liquid. Uh, I tend to only use liquid when I'm doing the initial um, glaze or the darker tones. Um, and the reason I use that is because it's quite transparent and it, it makes the, those darker areas look less flat. And then when you come to build over the top with more of an opaque color, it gives you that more of a 3D sort of look. So if you can keep that initial coat as transparent as possible, then that's definitely the best thing. So, I've done the darker shaded areas in there. Might need to just darken up on a few areas, but I'll do that as I go. But what you're trying to do is you need to find the darkest point in, those, in the photograph, in those trees. And that is the color you're trying to put down. Um, now you could just do it without liquid. So you mix the color and then just brush it on. So you get more of a smooth finish, but then I find when you do that, you're then having to build up on those details sort of in the shadows. We're doing it this way. Those details are already there to a certain degree because you've got that sort of more of a stippled look. Um, and also by you doing that with the liquid, that will dry a bit quicker. So it allow you to put the canopies over the top because that will go sticky quite soon. Um, and also you're utilizing the color that is already underneath that blocked in color. You're just changing the tone of it because you can still see that through there. Um, so give that a try and it, it, I find it just sort of speeds things up a little bit. Okay, so as you can see with the, that sort of darker ground I've put on there, it's already starting to look as if there's a fair amount of detail on it. Um, and that's with obviously that base coat and then just that darker layer over the top. So now when it comes to putting on the canopies and branches and things in there, you've already got a certain level of detail already. Um, yes, we may need to add a little bit more, but you know, we're sort of halfway there. So now let's put on some canopies. There's not a massive variation color wise between the tree at the back there and this tree here which is sort of much closer um, it's perhaps a little bit lighter a little bit more saturation so as we as we come forward we'll increase the amount of lightness and saturation um, which will give us that also that feeling of depth um, 
Well, let's get working on that now. We need to first of all decide what brush to get the right effect. Um, and I'm thinking initially it might take a couple of different attempts until I can find the right technique or the right brush, but I'm going to start with this fan brush here. So let's mix or try and mix the right colour. And once again, that might take a little bit of time to get that right as well. Um, that is still wet, the, the uh, liquid, but it has started to go off. Started to get a little bit tacky. Actually, I'm not going to add any more liquid to it. I just want to keep it fairly, you know, sort of dry this. Well, not dry, but certainly don't want it too watery. So what I do, mix, roughly mix the colour, hold it up to the photograph. That looks too dark to me. And then just keep adding or changing the colour until you're satisfied that you've got it right. It's not a million miles off when I hold it up to the photograph, but let's try see what it's like on the picture. Hmm, I think it could do with being a bit cooler. So I'm just adding a bit of cerulean blue and I'm going to add another dab of the titanium white, just a tiny little bit. Let's see if that's nearer. Yeah, I mean, it's very subtle, the difference. I think it needs a bit more sort of strength. So just to get that sort of, I want that slightly more acidic. I'm using that phthalo green yellow shade. That's a bit better. That is a bit better. So, I'm going to do all of these trees with this effect, I think, so it seems to be working quite well. I'm going to use just the very corner of the brush here. So I'm going to hold the brush at an angle, and that's going to give me sort of almost like a, a triangle. Can you see that? And they're only small, the little dots that I'm putting on. And I'm picking the paint up, I'm mixing it by drawing the brush backwards like this, and then the last one I push against it, just enough to pick up some paint on the tip. And then... put it on like that. So I'll need to continually adjust that colour as we go, and it's probably, I think it could do with some lightening up. Need to be a bit braver with the mixing. I think the trick is when you've got subtle colours like this is you need to be, you know, brave. One of the things I'm thinking at the moment is I'm being so careful with the colour change. You know, really don't need to. I'm just be a bit braver and just get that colour mixed. If you get it wrong, you can always pull it back a little bit. So one obvious difference between what we have here so far in the photograph is the edge of the tree. Now, because I've blocked it in and I've not really changed that shape, that looks really, really super solid. Um, and what I need to do now is break it up a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna do that by 
using this brush here. I don't know whether you can see that. Number two, Rosemary & Co Sable Blend Series 401. And it's only a small brush, as you can see, but it's got a nice point to it. And we should be able to just define that edge a little bit more. So now to do that, because I want it nice and sharp, I'm going to mix it with the paint thinner that I'm using. You need to get roughly the right colour. Now, first of all, I'm going to do a slightly darker edge. And I'm going to need this to lean on here so I don't mess up the rest of the work I've already done. And I'm just going to so I zoom in a little bit more. Just kind of go over some of that background there just with that foreground tree, just in places. I want it a little bit more opaque. So I'm just adding some titanium white. So if we put this foreground tree over the background tree, and then what we can do is introduce some areas within here where you can, you know, you've got gaps in the tree and you can see through. And I'm just doing it really sort of small, so I'm trying to mimic the, the photograph. Obviously the the more, as we come sort of nearer to the foreground trees, we can do these sort of little bits a bit bigger, but it needs to stay really small here. Using the same technique now, I'm going to move over here and do this area.
All right, we're into a position now where the trees are finished. Um, well, actually, I probably will just throw in a few branches just on this tree here, but uh, I don't know whether you noticed, I did them slightly differently, or at least these trees here, I did slightly differently to these trees. Because these trees are sitting that bit further back and have less detail, I've used this brush here because it gives you more of a, an en masse um, uh, sort of bunch of canopies. So it will do, it's not doing in the individual sort of leaves and things. As you come close here, looking at the photograph, you can almost see in the photograph each sort of leaf and it's got uh, the light point just on the sort of outside edge where the light is coming down and catching those canopies. And I wanted those to be a little bit more detailed, so I've used this brush here, the uh, Series 401 Rosemary & Co, and also the Series 771, number one, rigger brush. Uh, so far, so good. Lunchtime. 